In a few of my previous InDesign tutorials, I talked about strokes, outlines, thicknesses, and things like that. So I wanna show you the ins and outs of stroke designs. I'm gonna to come to File and Open. I'll go down to Chapter 9, Working Features, and I will open up Folder 1, Strokes Demo, Original Strokes. Okay, simple drawn out page, and I have three very simple lines. I use my line segment tool, held my shift key and dragged a horizontal line, and then I just made a couple of copies. So the thing you need to understand about strokes, what I would do first is if you're gonna be messing around with lines or outlines on boxes, go to window and show your stroke panel. Have that ready to go. I'll just put it down right over here. Okay, if I select the first line, this is a two point stroke. It's a nice thin line. If I zoom in real close to the end, it is chopped off like a long, skinny, sharp cornered rectangle. Okay, the ends of your lines are called caps. The first is called a butt cap. The black of the line just butts up to the end of the uh, point. You also have a round cap, which gives it a softer feel, and a projecting cap. Okay, I typically go with a round cap. It's just got a softer end to it. You also have different join features. So I'm going to zoom out and show you that right here. If I take my pen tool and just go click, 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 click. I'm gonna hit the curved arrow, make that a stroke, select it, and we'll make the stroke right up here, two points. This first sharp corner is called a miter join, right there, miter join. The middle one is a round join join giving your lines a little bit softer smoother appearance and the last one which i usually don't ever recommend is a beveled join it kind of chops off the tips so i tend to use both the middle ones right here give the ends of my lines a soft roundness give the uh, corners a soft roundness so it has a nice elegant clean smooth look to it okay i'm going to delete that and I'm going to come back to this line. Let's zoom out. We'll take a look at that. Okay, with my black arrow, if I select this and it's a thin line, you typically want the type of stroke to be the solid line. If you go thick and thick, can you even see that? You probably can. It probably looks gray. So when you have thin lines, keep it on solid. Okay. If you thicken up the line like that, now you can see some bulk to it. So I can come down and do a thick, thick line or a thick, thin or a thick, thin, thick. You know, the thicker you make your lines, the more you're going to see these multiple strokes. Okay. Also, you have gaps in between multiple lines. So the only problem with a design like this is you only get one gap color like that. The whole thing will turn blue. Okay, and I didn't want that. I wanted two gaps, maybe one red on the top and one yellow on the bottom. You can't do that. So if I wanted it to look like that, I'll thicken it up so you can see it right here. I would come in with boxes drag a box right to the center of that line and we'll click on the fill go to window color swatches and i'll fill that red and i'll just say object menu arrange send to back now i'm going to click and drag another box right here i'll fill that yellow and let's take my black arrow. I can move this up a little higher. Move this over a little more. Object, arrange, send to back. So I could technically have 
a thick line with two colored gaps. I just have to draw them as separate, like that. Okay, but there are tricks to get around it. Down here, I'm gonna make this line thicker again. And then what I can do with that thick line is look at some of the other styles. You have white diamonds. Of course, I still have a gap color right there. So let's take that out and set it to none. There we go. Little white diamonds. I have Japanese dots, dashed lines, a different type of dashed line with more gaps or wider gaps. I've also got left slant hashes looks like stitching, straight hashes, which are just uh, straight vertical lines, or your traditional dotted line. Okay, now, after all of this, let's say I design and I don't like any of these. Well, everybody gets these to start with. I wanna design my own. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is customize my InDesign. I'm going to select all three, go back to the type being solid, and let's set all of them to a thickness of six. Okay, right back where we started. Now what I'm going to do on my stroke panel is click the pop-up. I've got nothing selected. Click the pop-up and say stroke styles. Okay, these are my typical styles for single lines, just typical lines. But I don't like these. I want to design my own. So I'm going to say new. And it's going to ask me right up here at the top, what kind of line are you trying to make? I'm going to make a stripe. So now this is the measurement marker. Okay, I have these little blue triangles. I can make the top line really thick or make the top edge really thin. I can click and drag right in here and add a third line. And maybe we'll just drag that one up. And we'll keep the bottom one kind of thick right there. I'm gonna call this one my demo triple stroke. I click okay. And now my triple demo stroke. I'm going to go new and we'll do another one. Let's do another striped line. Only this one is going to be really thin up there and really thick right there. We'll call that really thick stroke and I'll add. Okay, done. Now I got really thick stroke. So I'm going to click OK. Now I can select this line right here on the type of stroke I want. My two latest will show up at the bottom of the list. So there's my demo triple stroke. We'll make that even thicker so you can see it. There we go. Select this and we'll go with really thick stroke with a tiny little gap in there. And we'll thicken that up so you can see it. Okay, so you can design your own strokes. I'm also going to come here, stroke styles, and say new. And now I want to make a dotted line. <clears throat> so you have half of a dot, which repeats itself over and over. You can click to add another dot. And if you put them real close together like this, that's kind of hard to see. So I can adjust the thickness of that preview. Make it really thick so I can actually see what's going on here. We'll just kind of bump it apart like this. Notice how that's really filling the gaps here. Um, let's go over there. Yeah, that looks kind of stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm going to put these right next to each other. Let's see what they do right there. Cool. I'm going to add that to my list. And I'll click Done. And there's my new stroke style. So I'll select this line. Go down to new stroke style. And I'll thicken that up. Of course, the thicker I make it, the more they just blend together, which is kind of lame. Okay, not a good designer for dotted lines. I think you should just stick with dotted lines. Those are fine. All right, the last type of stroke. 
stroke styles, new is a dashed line. So again, I've got a nice thick stroke style here. I'm gonna make this really thin. Then in the, black, uh, the white area, I'm gonna drag another black line right there. And then another thin line and another thick line. Now, if I don't like what I did here, I could just pull it straight down and tear it off. I didn't really like that. Let's drag a new one right there. Good, that kind of fills up the space a little better. Drag this over. Okay, let's see what that looks like here. Let's drag this over, drag these over, and we'll keep this one apart right here. I'll click uh, OK. It's added to the list right there, new stroke style copy, and I'll just click OK. So now I can select this one, go down to the new stroke style copy, and there's a totally new designed dash line. Now notice how the dashes are growing up and down. Okay, I wanna click stroke styles, new, and see if I can make these go at a uh, horizontal. I don't think I can because that's the regular lines right here, a stripe. So keep in mind, dash lines, they have to go up and down. You can't rotate this whole thing. Um, pattern length, let's go down like that. You can make them a lot smaller. Or I can make the pattern length a lot longer like that. So now we can go right here. Put another line right there and another line right there and another line right there and another thick line there and just keep having fun designing these lines click ok click ok select and try my new stroke style there we go okay if you decided you don't like that tiny little gap right there i'll zoom in so you can see that I really don't like how that very thin gap showed up in my stroke. I'm just gonna go to stroke styles again. I'm gonna click, uh, let's see, let's click on this one because I don't like how that came out. And I'm gonna edit that. Okay, let's turn on the preview. Let's just take this little black line right here and move it so I can see, no, that's not the one I wanted. That's the one, nope. Let's see if it's this one. Ah, that's the one I want. Okay, I'm just gonna move that over. I see it in live preview, that's cool. I like this thin one, maybe a little more toward that end. I've widened out that gap. I click okay and I click okay and it instantly updates. So I love that fact, of, fact about the strokes. You can design your own strokes. Okay, let's see, I do have another one right here. So now that I've designed a few strokes, shown you how they work, shown you how the gap fill works. So even on a dash line, I do have a gap fill right here. So you can see it'll look nice and solid. Even on a dotted line, there are gaps between the dots. So I could click here and add a gap fill but it's always gonna be the one color unless you draw separate boxes. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna close this up, no need to save it. And I'm gonna go right back to file and open and show you right here. I've got a little layout for an old Photoshop test that I did, identify the tools in the toolbox. Okay, so I'm gonna select all these arrows and delete them. I'll select all these and delete them. We'll just do half of the toolbox. But I want to point to these. Hey, here's a tool, point to where they should write the answer. So if I take my line tool and I simply put it here, click and drag, I go to my black arrow, that's just gonna be a straight line. Okay, so I can select that. We'll make the stroke weight two. And then way down here, it says start and end. So I'm gonna click this pop-up. At the start of this line, I want nothing. Yeah, let's go with the circle. Okay, there we go, circle. 
at the end of the line because I dragged to the right. That was the end. I'm going to put an arrowhead, a triangle. Now, that triangle is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to unlock the scale, break that link, and now I want the arrowheads, only the arrowheads, to be bigger. So I'm going to hit the up arrow. I'm going to keep holding it, holding it, holding it. Now I can let go. I'll go up to 200% right here. And there we go. You can design lines or arrows. Great for maps and indicators. So I can select this and at any time I can change this N and say maybe I want that to be a square. Maybe I want that square to be also 200%. Of course, that looks really bulky and not too good. So let's click that and say edit undo. But at the bottom of your stroke panel, you have start and ends. And it doesn't just matter for a single stroke line. Okay, I can make that line really thick. Of course, that's now 200% of this stroke. So I want to bring these down. Let's link those and start hitting the down arrow. There we go. I'm going to highlight this and let's type 50%. Ah, let's highlight these and type both 50%. There we go. Now I can link them. And let's bring this a little thicker right there. But now I can go with a thick, thick arrow or a thick, thin arrow, whatever you want. And I can still add a gap color in the arrow and add a little flair to this. Click here, unlink, and then I'll set the scale down for the little square at the beginning there. Or just take it off and say none. So there we go. I do not have to redesign this every time. I can take my black arrow, option key for a copy, option key for a copy, option key for a copy. And with my white arrow, I can click outside and say, well, this one should have pointed to the gradient tool up there. This one should have pointed to the brush tool, this one I wanted pointed at the magic wand right there. Okay, so you have the ability to manipulate these arrows. I can take this end and point it way down here if I wanted to. A lot of flexibility with strokes. And I'm just going to put these kind of back in my panels area where they belong. Uh, this links panel is stretched out like crazy. So let's put them back down in here and we'll take my stroke panel and put it back. So fun with strokes here in Photoshop. I'm going to, or pff, Photoshop, fun with strokes and designs in InDesign. This was a, from a Photoshop test. So let me close that up and we will move on to another feature here in Adobe InDesign.